All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott. I've been doing a couple uh, kind of prequel um, presentations for the 152, 167 Ajax and JavaScript website development and 152, 164 design and implementation projects classes for the spring 2016 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. So I've already done lectures on the first 11 chapters of our textbook. Sam, teach yourself Angular, JS, JavaScript, and jQuery all in one. So now I'm coming in and starting to go through. I've gone through one presentation, a little intro, part one, to um, HTML5, and this is part two. Next, I'm going to go in and do another intro for uh, CSS3, and then finally, I'm going to. Uh, I'm still creating this last one, but uh, I'm going to have some kind of an intro to jQuery as well. So. Most of this layout and styling that was pre-HTML5 was defined as being in one of two categories, block and inline. If you don't know the difference, if something is block, that means there'll be a blank line before it and after it. For instance, a P tag, a paragraph tag. All right, you'll have blank line before it and a blank line after it. Inline tags are tags that, that are not, do not have anything before them. So it's like a bold tag or B tag or a strong tag or an I tag or an M tag, etc. As mentioned here, HTML5 defines a set of more granular content category modules. So you can take a look at that if you have uh, desire to do so. Okay, so as it says, there's metadata content that goes up near the top. There's also flow content that is inside of the document itself, so it's in the body where where the metadata stuff is in the head, the flow stuff will be in the body. There's also sectioning content. These are some of the things that we looked at a little bit in the last presentation, but if you want more again on article aside, nav, and section, you can go back and take a look at that one. There's heading content. By now you should be totally aware of the fact that there's six levels of headings. As the numbers go up, the size of the heading font goes down. Phrasing content, as it says. Now remember, the idea is today you use strong as opposed to a B tag for bold. You use M as opposed to an I tag for italicize. And the reason is those tags are basically written to work with any kind of browser, including a browser for, for people who uh, are blind, for example. Some of the new tags that we've we've got in here all right some of the new stuff newer stuff that we're looking at with embedded content not, not all these are new i understand that but working with video and canvas and object for example all right so interactive content as it says context through which users can interact Now, I'm not, I don't want to read this to you, but again, this all goes back to what we talked about earlier with semantics. The idea is that you want to have tags that anyone can take a look at them and understand what the tag is associated with. Some of the newer HTML5 elements, figure and fig caption, ideally that you, know, you, you take a figure uh, an image and you put it inside of a figure tag and if you want to mark up that fig that image with some kind of a caption you use the fig caption tag and again you'll notice on here that all of these are hyperlinked all right and they're actually going to the developer.mozilla.org account so if we just look at this one for example it's going to give you right from the source itself including Usage notes, what's permitted, attributes, and one or more examples. All right, so it's really, really well done here. All right, the mark, as it says, most commonly used in the context of a search. Progress, which is used to show the current status. Basically, it's like a progress bar type of thing. Meter represents an element with a known range. In other words, as it says, it's got a minimum, maximum. You can see the different things that are shown with that. Time, designed to deal with problems, as it says, that humans have reading dates 
and times differently from the way that those are read through machines. So again, along with the semantic, the idea is to make things more understandable both for the human and for the machine. Details, as mentioned here, designed to help mark up a section that is currently hidden but can be expanded later. All right. In HTML5, as mentioned, deprecated elements are now referred to as being obsolete. Notice the difference is while a deprecated element will eventually be removed, an obsolete element will not. Well, in English, this is my take on this. And that is the fact that there are, you know, with some of these tags that are in here that have been deprecated, they have been on sites for years and years and years. And the idea is even though new developments should not include these tags, there are millions, if not billions, of them in existing development. So although you can see they're deprecated, they'll probably never be removed. All right, that's why they talk, call them obsolete now. Some examples. Again, the B tag replaced with the strong tag. As it says, the strong tag, all right, the B tag was redefined to represent a section with stylistically offset without conveying extra importance. Well, the strong does show extra importance. Same thing with the I and the M. And again, much of this stuff that was done on here was done through the guise of trying to make it easier for, for, for uh, browsers, for people with challenges. Before HTML5, the big element was used. Now it's basically it's one of those obsolete elements. Small today, about the only place that it's used is inside of footers. You know, where you have something in there that might have something small that has like a legal disclaimer or whatever. As it says, before HTML5, the site element was used to refer to a citation or a reference. But as of HTML5, it's just to describe a title of work. The definition list. Now stands for a description list. As it says, it should be used to mark up any kind of name value pair. If you notice, as it says in HTML5, that validator is no longer concerned with code style. You can mix uppercase and lowercase, all right, and you can make you know, omit quotes, etc., and it'll still validate. As mentioned before, this is the validator. Well, this is what I tried to get to before, and for whatever reason, this is when the machine locked up. I'm not sure why it's locking up now, though. Talk on it. <sighs> this is where PowerPoint actually locked up before. I shouldn't have even clicked on that. So I'm on slide 23 of 31. Sorry about that. And again, after this, what is left is to go in and um, what is left after, afterward rather is to go in and look at um, not in this particular presentation, but in the next one is to go in and look at some CSS3 stuff and some jQuery stuff. So what does count as an error in HTML5? I'll let you read that yourselves. The big thing is all these things really boil down to the last bullet on here. Other markup conflicts within the, it probably should be within and not with, but within the HTML5 specification. Here are some examples. You know, again, the idea is use BR like this, don't use it like this, use HR like this and not like this, etc. Yeah, and although some of this stuff isn't required any longer, it's still considered good, good um, form to do so. And I, I gave you some things last time saying that really elements should still be lowercase you should still put quotes around attributes. All right, even though some of this stuff might no longer be required, it's still considered 
good programming practice to do it that way. Some things, as it said, deprecated or invalid in pre-HTML5 and XHTML based syntax like embed are now valid. All right, why? Because they've been updated, upgraded. Some are no longer mandated, but the idea is what we've done here, I shouldn't say we, but what the W3C has done basically is they've tried to upgrade the language to make it what it should be for what people are doing today. Text area is not required to have rows and columns. Block elements can be placed inside of A elements. The ampersand does not need to be encoded as AMP if it appears in page text. But again, you'll still typically see it done like that. And then finally, all right, all the big things that have been introduced into forms. We'll have more on that later, okay? So that's pretty much it for the second presentation. And as mentioned, I don't know what I changed, but what the heck. No, I'm not going to do that. In the last presentation that I'll be doing then in this group, okay, it'll be on here where we will be going over an in intro to CSS3, okay? And I'm just example after example after example. I don't have it uh, in me to do any more tonight, so I'll be back to do this tomorrow.